All right, so now we're going to take what we learned about ratio and proportion, and we're going to apply them to polygons. So again, let's kind of just recap what similar means. It is the same shape, but a different size. And congruent, so just so you know that there is a difference, this is same shape, same size. Two polygons are similar polygons if corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding side lengths are proportional. So again, I just want to kind of recap that. If polygons are similar, their angle measurements are going to be exactly the same. However, their side lengths are not going to be the same. They're going to be proportional. Proportional means that the side lengths, when you reduce them, when you set up the ratio and reduce it, that they're going to have the same exact ratio. All right, so when figures are similar, we use the little symbol there that's tilde. So it's a little different than the congruent. So you can see the congruent sign is here, and this means similar. So again, similar, the angles are the exact same measure, the sides are proportional. Now, once you have a ratio that is the same for two figures, then we refer to that as the scale factor. So if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of the two corresponding lengths is called the scale factor. And sometimes I'll abbreviate that SF. So let's see, we're going to use the similarity statement here. So remember again, these statements are very important. So this statement's already telling us that these are similar. We're going to list all the pairs of congruent angles. So remember, we're just going to kind of match up. Well, A corresponds with D. So angle A is going to be congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. Now prove that all the ratios of the corresponding side lengths are equal. So remember, if the figures are similar, then their ratios are going to be the same. So you, how do you get a ratio? Remember, you just set up a fraction. So there's kind of like an, the way things flow is that we set up a fraction Right, And then once we reduce that, it's referred to as the ratio. And if two polygons have the exact same ratio, so if you have the exact same ratio times two, then we refer to that as the scale factor. So when you have similar figures, so what you're going to do is match up the corresponding sides. So you can see here AB is going to correspond with DE. Another way to tell which pieces correspond is that you're going to take the smallest side from one triangle and you're going to match it up with the smallest side of the other triangle. And we're going to build a fraction. So since they didn't really tell us like which triangle to start with or which way they wanted us to write the fraction, really we could write it as 8 over 12 or 12 over 8 because there were no specific instructions. Typically we kind of follow the similarity statement. So since triangle ABC is listed first, we're going to go ahead and put that on top on our fraction. If we reduce that, we get 2 thirds. Now you're going to match up the medium size with the medium size. So 10 over 15, when you reduce that 2 thirds, then you're going to match the longest side with the longest side. So 12 over 18 reduce 2 thirds. So again, this is what it's going to look like when figures are similar. You can see here the angles are going to be the exact same measure, and this is what we're talking about. We have a fraction. When you reduce a fraction, it becomes the ratio. So all of these side lengths are proportionate because they're all exactly the same. So if we wanted to go a step further and say, all right, what is the scale factor? Well, since all of these ratios are the same, then we can say the scale factor between these two is two thirds. And so what that's saying is that this triangle is two thirds the size of the larger one. So now we want to write the ratios corresponding sign lengths in a statement of proportionality. So all that is is using the letters 
like we did, we're going to, instead of putting 8 over 12, we're just going to put the name of the, the sides. So AB over DE, well, that fraction is equal to BC over EF, which is also equal to AC over DF. So this is called your statement of proportionality when you're just writing that all the sides have the same ratio. So next, we're going to determine whether the polygons are similar. If they are, we're going to write a similarity statement and find the scale factor. So to see if they're similar, again, we're going to match up the side lengths. So we have all of these 8s here, and that's the small side, and this is 14. So all of these 8s pair up with the 14, so we're going to set up our fraction. We're going to reduce it, so take a 2 out of each. So then there's our ratio of the sides is 4 to 7. So that's one side. Let's check the other ones. So 12 is going to match up with 21. If we take a 3 out of both of those, we get 4 sevenths. So since the ratios are the same, we there can then say, yes, the triangles are similar. So our statement of similarity would be that triangle, or, well, it's a polygon. So not a triangle. So you don't have to write anything. When it's a polygon, you don't put a symbol in front of it. We're just going to say polygon A, B, C, D is similar to J, K, L, M. And that's our similarity statement. In the figure below, determine the scale factor of LPMN to an FGHJ and find the value of X. So they're telling us they're similar already. They want us, though, to find the scale factor. So we're going to just match up a pair of sides. Say, all right, I'm going to match up this 12 with the 15. And since FGH came first, I'm going to put that on top. So 15 over 12. If you reduce that, what are we going to do? Take a 3 out of both. So there's your scale factor. Whatever the side lengths reduce to is your scale factor. And you can check that also this one is going to reduce to the same thing. Because if you do 20 over 16 and take a 4 out of both, there's your two similar ratios, and so that is your scale factor. Now, to find the value of x. So this is where we use the whole idea of what we did last time with the ratios and the proportions. So now we're going to use a proportion. Remember what a proportion is. A proportion says that two ratios are equal. Well, that's what we have here. We have two ratios that are equal. So we need to solve for this x over here. Well, it corresponds with the 40. So we have to solve for x. It corresponds with the 40. It doesn't matter which one's on top or bottom the first time, but since we started here with this smaller polygon, then we have to make sure and mimic it. So we're going to say, all right, well, let's see, this 16 here corresponds with the 20. So you're going to set up a proportion because you know the ratios are equal. That's what a proportion is, two equal ratios, and then you're going to cross multiply and solve. So 20x is equal to, and then we got to do 40 times 16. 640, 640 divided by 20 is 32. So that is saying that this side length is 32. Remember, you can always check this because you know that the corresponding sides should reduce to the same scale factor. So if you wanted to set up, all right, 32 over 40, all right, and if you wanted to reduce that, Sorry, we would have to have it set up the other way around because that's how we did these one, this one. So 40 over 32. All right, we take an 8 out of both, and we get 5 over 4. So you know that your 32 is the correct answer. All right, so determine whether the polygons are similar. If so, determine the scale factor and write the similarity statement. So I would like you to do examples 4 and examples 5 on your own and come to class with them done. Again, they're just like the examples we did um, on the other side. 
So look at examples two and three. Now, there's also ways we can use similar polygons. More specifically, triangles. So we can use triangles to find indirect measures. So basically it's saying that we're using um, triangles to find just different measurements and lengths. All right, so when a 16 foot tall climbing wall, so we have a 15 foot tall climbing wall and it's casting a shadow of 20 feet. And then we have a building that cast a shadow of 32 feet. They want to know, hmm, how high is the building? So we can, again, we're going to use triangles, because what we know about a triangle, remember the height's always perpendicular to the ground, and we're going to set up a ratio. So 15 is the height. It's going to correspond to this height, so 15 over x. Got to start on the same side. So this 20 corresponds with the 32. So 20 over 32. Cross multiply. So 20x equals 32 times 15 is 480. Divide that by 20. So x is 24. So your building is going to be 24 feet. So that's using polygons to find indirect measures. In example 7, you see the two ladders are leaning against the wall at the same angle shown. How long is the shorter ladder? So again, a proportion. This is kind of the height of the wall, the height of the wall. So I'm going to set that up. This is 54 is the length of the ladder. I've got to find the length of the shorter ladder. So cross multiply. 30x is equal to 540. So your shorter ladder is going to be 18 feet long. In example 8, a rectangle has a length of 15 centimeters. Another rectangle is drawn using a scale factor of 2 to 3. What is the length of the second triangle? Rectangle, sorry. You have a rectangle that has a length of 15. Basically, it's the same thing. You're just given a scale factor. Remember what a proportion is. A proportion says that two ratios are equal. You can use a proportion to find missing measures. So you have, all right, two over three is one side of the proportion because a scale factor is a ratio. All right, so the other one, the other rectangle is drawn using a scale factor of 2 to 3. Since that number is less than 1, that means our rectangle is going to get smaller. So since 2 is smaller than 3, I'm going to put the x on top, and the 15 has to go on bottom because this is going to be the small rectangle, and this is going to be the large rectangle. Cross multiply, then divide. So that's the length of the second rectangle. All right, so just to review ratios in Miss Poliak's class, 12 girls to 18 boys, what is the ratio of girls to boys? So a ratio is just a fraction. Always pay attention, though, to the order it wants you to write the ratio in because sometimes it may say boys to girls, go girls to boys. So that is, if it's specific, you have to give the answer in that order. So we have 12 girls to 18 boys, so that's our fraction. To get a ratio, we have to reduce. So if you take a 3 out of both, uh, we can take more than a 3. We're going to take a 6 out of both. We get 2 thirds. So the ratio of girls to boys is 2 thirds.